Con, how's it going? All right, let's say we get the show on the road, kick off this, this panel room with a good energy. So my name is Marzu, I am a news editor with Collider, and I am so honored to be your moderator today, so please join me in giving a very warm welcome to Mr. John Reese davies seven people here. <laughs> Clearly the homeless problem, problem we have in, in Orlando is considerable, yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, jolly nice to, to see you. Sorry I arrived a bit late, but even with the fastest electric cart possible, it was like driving to Fort Knox and back. <laughs> That's amazing. Anyway, thank you so much for coming. Um, <laughs> Obviously, you have a lot of fans who are very recognized for your iconic roles, Lord of the Rings, Indiana Jones. So, what is it like for you to still see this sort of love and response for for your considerable body of work? Actually, that's a more that's a more profound question than one normally gets. To be honest with you, <laughs> um, I. I went to my first fan convention, I think around about 1980, no, no, 1996 or seven or eight or something. I was promoting something and I remember my attitude. It was, oh God, why have I got to do this? I'm going to see 700 people dressed up like Captain Kirk. <laughs> Can't they get a life? I, and I went and slowly it dawned on me that they do have lives. Extraordinarily rich and wonderful lives. All so complicated. The actual business of fan conventions and coming to them, I think is one of the most important things that an actor can do. To actually meet the people who've been paying his bills for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. But, But the real change is that I realize as I look back on my life that I don't really like the younger me. And the younger me didn't really like people. And what you fans have done for me over the years is make me like people more and more and love people more and more. It's probably senility, really, but, uh, but uh, I want to thank you for that. I, uh, you teach me so much. Uh, you make me value life more. And uh, I cannot thank you enough for that. Thank you. To turn this over to all of you. <laughs> oh, yes, now, before you, we turn it over to you, I want you to look at this splendid badge here, right? Oh, I've got, this, got the wrong one, but it's still the same topic. Roman. Roman is the new NASA telescope that they will be launching, I think, in two, three, or four years' time. Um, its function is a 2.6 meter telescope. But its real function is to look at the universe through as many sort of prisms to catch as many sort of, as much information, you know, at different, at, at different radiation levels. At, uh, at everything they can possibly put on this great wheel that will turn around inside it just to capture information looking at it. Because what they're looking for is really evidence of dark matter. It's an extraordinary thing. You live in a estate which has real connections with the space industry. Your country, the United States, is the leading explorer in the world of, 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 of the 
universe. NASA is one of the great jewels of mankind, along with Wikipedia, by the way. <laughs> I hope that you who use a Wikipedia will put in five or ten dollars at the end of the year. Anyway, uh, j j just a real cheer for science. Science... I tell you what, the other day, I, I accidentally got scooped up. We were. We were in New Orleans and they were having the American Astronomical Society's meetings there. And, and somehow there was a, a mistake and they invited me just to, just, just to welcome guests at the, uh, <laughs> uh, at the American Astronomical, uh, Astronomical Association. And I said, how many people? And they said, oh, about 3,200 potentially. I don't think they're all here. Yes. So I walked into this room and I said, well, you know what? Um, you know, I have played to bigger audiences before. I've played up to 25,000. But I've never been in a room with potentially 3,200 people, every one of which is so much smarter than me. <laughs> Very embarrassing. Sorry, go on, carry on. <laughs> okay, no, 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 for me. Um, so we have two microphones set up for your questions. We have one on this side, and we have one on this side for all of you lovely folks in the room. So all that I ask is that you obviously keep it polite, keep it to one question. We want to get through as many of you as possible. So why don't we start on this side? Yes, Mr. Rice Davies, I just wanted to... Which side? Right. Which side? My Mr. Rice Davies. Oh, 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 to your right. Oh my God, there you are. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Yes, go ahead. I just want to say it's a pleasure to have you here, have you here at MegaCon. Thank you. And I got to see you up in Jacksonville last year at CollectiveCon. It was awesome to see you there as well. I'm and getting to see America again, it's wonderful. <laughs> but my question for you is, who do you like playing more, Sala or Gimli? My daughter said to me the other day, I'm your favorite child, aren't I? <laughs> and I said, you are my favorite daughter. No, I'm your favorite child. Um, how can you actually really separate the love you have for your children, for instance. And, uh, characters are a bit like that. They're, they take a bit of you, or they grow a bit in you, and you end up rather like caring for them. Give me, well, Sala is wonderful. Um, he was very different. He, do you realize that Sala is probably the, the only Arab hero in contemporary Western culture that we recognize. I mean, that's a major failure of two cultures there. Um, I, I like him. I think, I, I tell you how I think Salah ends up. I think he ends up like that wonderful fellow, Walid al Asadi, who was the keeper uh, of the museum. Um, oh, in Palmyra, and when ISIS came, or I think it was ISIS, uh, he refused, he'd hidden all the treasures, and he refused to give them up to them, and uh, they said, if you don't, we will kill you, and he refused, and I think he was 82 years old, and he was forced to kneel, and they beheaded him. That's a man protecting his culture. That's a man protecting history. And I believe that's the sort of man that Salah might have become. Yes. Um, oh, and Gimli, well. <laughs> I'm incapable of a sound bite, aren't I? Well, never mind. Um, Gimli, yes. Gimli is the most human character in Lord of the Rings. Gimli is the bad things about us, the jealousy, the suspicion, the xenophobia, and uh, the meanness of spirit, and is also all the things that we would wish we were. You know, kind, loyal, a great friend, um, 
and brave beyond all reasoning. You know, I mean, that's a wonderful moment when, you know, he's, a, he's about to go into, he's going to single-handedly go or take on, you know, a, a thousand people, you know, and he says, toss me. <laughs> toss me, I, I, I cannot make the jump. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me <the> else. <laughs> I mean, that's good. Uh, I, I, I don't know which I love most. <laughs> but I love them. Thank you, sir. <laughs> First, thanks for your, um, everything you're continuing to give us. Thank you. Uh, I don't think any of us will tell the elf that he tossed us some answers. <laughs> uh, having voiced the mighty Thor and played Wilson Fisk, do you have any other superhero movie ambitions? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, the world of superheroes don't really ring my bell. Um, you know, they're a little bit predictable. Um, the real heroes. I have get, I met I, I met a guy today who turned up to my desk. He's a retired vet, and uh, uh, he said special forces. And uh, I said, so, so I saw a bit of action, and he said, well, uh, yeah, I've been shot twice, stabbed once, and I've got some shrapnel in me. But I guess, but I'm retired now. <laughs> you know, give me real heroes. Give me the lady who I saw today, who has just had. The, uh, her, her last treatment for chemotherapy and is starting to grow her hair. <laughs> we actors get all the praise and all the applause. Last night I had the privilege of, 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 of being at Planet Hollywood because they invited me to come along and promote the show. And I brought along uh, two friends. Um, uh, uh, Nicole Stott is, of course, uh, an astronaut, uh, probably the, the the greatest role model for women astronauts uh, that the world has seen so far. That's a real hero. And, and her husband is um, a visionary and dreamer who's founded so many companies, and, um, and he's he full of practical application of of um, ex the ex exploiting space for commercial reasons. He's going to build a data bank on the moon. Um, and he's got satellites going. And, you know, we live in, this is the golden age. Never forget it. We are living in the golden age. Man has never been more free. We've doubled our life expectancy over the last hundred odd years. It is the golden age. Enjoy it and try and preserve it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, name is Alfred, and I agree with you about NASA. It's a good, good organization to search for stuff out in space. Uh, I'm going to bring you down to Earth. You've done historical, archaeological narration films, documentaries. Um, what got you interested in? Was it just you had a great voice, which you do? Or was there a, a, an interest as when you were young about looking into history, archaeology? Uh, and then you did a movie, The Search for uh, Mount Sinai, with Bob Kranuk. And I just wanted to know if you know Bob Kranuk personally, also. Yes, I think I do. Hang on, there are so many questions there. That I'm, First I'm, one is, I'm trying to process it. Uh, uh, yes, history, I, I, I'm passionate about history. Um, you know that wonderful uh, Gauguin painting, which is titled um, uh, Where Do We Come From? Who Are We? Where Are We Going? I may have got the thing slightly mislabeled, but that really is the, one of the key questions of mankind. Where, where do we come from? Where do we come from? Uh, I've been talking to a guy lately who said, look, John, there is an awful lot of evidence that really supports the, the, the ancient civilizations theory. And I laughed at him and he said, don't laugh. 
He said, what we are seeing from satellite imaging and what we are seeing from laying cables uh, and, and finding them snagged is we're, we're, we're not finding just submerged villages like Doggerman, which is uh, off the coast of, between England and the continent. He said, we're finding entire cities that have been submerged. Um, I'm a skeptic, I want to see more of the evidence. But unquestionably, don't forget, 100,000 years ago, we had an ice age. Uh, not the first, probably not the last, but um, a major ice age. Uh, we, uh, this, the ice was probably, probably about this far down. Europe and most of North America were under up to a half a mile or a mile of snow. That locked up so much water uh, in the atmosphere that sea levels were a lot lower. And once the sea levels, uh, once, once the global warming had happened around really about 20,000 years ago, slowly that, that ice gets unlocked and, and, and the sea rises. And we have, we have stories all around the world of catastrophic uh, inundations by the sea. Um, yeah, it, it, it's very, oh, uh, the other thing, the other interesting thing is when, when England, for instance, uh, was under ice, a mile of ice, as the ice retreats, the south of England rises, and when the ice is completely gone, then land starts settling down again. And, and, and one of the reasons why we will have flooding increasingly in, in southern England is because the land is, 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 is settling back down. It, it, it's an extraordinary thing. Geography is so much a determinant of human history, of history entirely. Uh, anyway, no more of that. I love history, yes, yes. It's so wonderful to see you here today at MegaCon Orlando. And my question is, you have such a wonderful voice. And as an actor, is that something that you worked on? Or is it just a natural gift that you have? And it's no more evident in the Indiana Jones trailer that came out before the film was released that there was so much emotion um, in, that, in that short, you know, couple minutes of a trailer, and I was wondering if that's something that you worked on, or it's just a natural gift that you have. All actors who are stage trained work on it. Um, they have to. Um, you know, we don't run out of breath normally when we're engaged in conversation. But when you're on the stage, you have to make sure that there is enough breath there so that you can be heard and be audible right at the back of the theatre. And you can only do it. You can. You can only do that. <laughs> By learning to fill the lungs, you know, uh, it's amazing how much air you can get into your lungs. Normally we just go like that and then, but really we could go a bit more and then we could actually go and get even more out of it and we could probably go mm, Doesn't it? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, yeah, actors all work on it. And, and you should all, everyone, should do a little bit of acting in their lives. That terrible business of getting up in front of people and having to say something, 
and, and which leads me, of course, to one of the most important things I have to tell you. Right. <laughs> Who here is shy? <laughs> oh, you're such a confident lot. <laughs> Of course, there may be one or two liars among you, but <laughs> shyness, I think, is vanity. Shyness is us being afraid of being judged by other people. So, when I come into this room now, and I see all of you there, and I think, oh God, they're all looking at me, they're judging me, and they're saying, gosh, he doesn't stand up straight anymore, he's got a very round back, and, and I mean, he's, He's limping a little bit, yes. Well, of course he's limping. Just had a hernia operation. Ah, I mean, I don't mean that. Um, uh, but if I start thinking about me and you judging me, I'm, I'm doomed. I can't answer you because I'm thinking about me. So the trick that I employ and the trick that I urge you to teach children and yourselves is turn it the other way around. Instead of thinking, I think, instead of me thinking that you are judging me, I say, all of you think that I am judging you. <laughs> and my job is to make you feel comfortable. If I can make you feel at ease, if I, then anything can happen. If I make a move, it doesn't matter because we're humans talking to each other on a friendly basis. And the real key to... <laughs> the real key to success in life is to learn that early. If you know how to make strangers feel comfortable and at ease, there is no limit to what you can succeed in. There is no limit. You may not be the sharpest knife in the drawer. You may not be the visionary genius of the company. But you're the person that people come to and say, look, I've got an idea, um, but I'm afraid of putting it to him or her. Um, if you're the person who can listen and say, no, that's not a bad idea. However, I think you need to do this and this, and then we'll work out some way of dealing with it. How do you learn that trick? It's simple, because every one of us was taught the basis of it. The basis of, 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 of putting strangers at ease is good manners. It's actually projecting a little bit of joy or a bit of fun out. You start off as a little boy, and you're very shy, and you're taught to say, hello. <laughs> No. <laughs> now, learn that. Learn to say hello. 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 And learn to just, just to go out every day and say to every person you meet, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You know, that's the basic thing. And most people will say, hello, good morning. Uh, somebody will say, <laughs> that is the test. The next time you see them, you say, hello. You the, same thing. the next day you say, good morning, good morning, good morning. And the 25th time you'll go, you'll always say good morning to me. Well, I do, sir. Yes, it is a good morning, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> 26th time. Good morning. Mm. Morning. Twenty-eighth time. Good morning, he says. Beat your toy this time. And you won the victory. The smartest thing is to make your opponent, your enemy, actually like you. That's, that's the great jujitsu trick of relationships. Anyway, just Remember this, whenever you go into a meeting, whenever you go into an interview, you know, look at them and think, gosh, they think I'm judging them. And 
Obviously, you can't go, you can, you can get it wrong. But if you basically think these are people who are trying to find some reason to employ me, find some reason to accept me on this course, then just treat them like human beings. Um, you'll notice, for instance, I wear these wonderful ties. I have a great collection of ties. A, partly because I'm going to be in a dark box for a long time, very soon, uh, and I'd like a bit of color in my life, and there's no <laughs> color in that time. Um, uh, but partly because also it, 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 it's a way of breaking down that barrier between us. You know, people say, oh, that's a nice tie, and you say, yes, and then, then, then. you've got a starting point of a conversation. I, I do talk too much. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Did I answer any part of your question? <laughs> I hope not. No, 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 you got shortchanged. All right. We will have one line answers to good questions for everybody standing, okay? No more join the line. Your turn, quick. Hello, it's so nice to see you. Um, I was going to say, what you just shared with us about overcoming shyness is so um, meaningful, at least to me. Um, I was nervous just to come up here, so I feel a lot better about it now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, my question is, I'm a big fan of the movie The Trial of the Incredible Hulk, and I was wondering if you might have any uh, really quick fun stories to share with us of uh, your time on that film. Gosh, I wish I'd heard that question. <laughs> what was it? Uh, the Trial of the Incredible Hulk, a favorite. Oh, The Trial of the Incredible Hulk, yeah, with Bixby. Bixby was a glorious man. Bixby I loved tremendously. He was, he was terrific and it was a great show. I perhaps should have had a haircut, but oh, come on, he had hair once. <laughs> Next. Hi, hello. Uh, with you coming to conventions so, for so long, for so many years, uh, do you yourself find uh, any fandoms that you are a part of? Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> do you have any fandoms that you are a part of? Oh, good lord, yes. Oh, yes. Wish I'd done more Star Trek. Um, uh, you know, yeah, no, it's wonderful just watching your fellow actors do wonderful things and uh, getting away with it. <laughs> Sorry, yes, next. Hi, yes, thank you so much for coming out here to visit us. It's actually a dream to meet you. Um, I was wondering if you would film anything like Lord of the Rings again, because from what I saw from behind the scenes, it was absolutely crazy filming three long movies back to back for three years. Would you do anything like that ever again? I don't know that I've got that many years left, my dear. <laughs> oh, come on, let's not get... It'll be very cheap. Don't get, don't get so fussed about dying. Everyone here is going to do it. <laughs> It's not enough to teach your children how to live. You have to teach them how to die as well. Do not be frightened of dying. But be frightened about how you die. I mean. <laughs> but don't worry about it. Seneca, that wonderful author. Oh God, I'm here and doing it again. Yes. You answer a simple question there. Yeah. Let me finish with Seneca. It's more interesting. <laughs> uh, Seneca says you should rehearse death. Because we fear death so much, think about it, rehearse it, and then your fear will go. Uh, would I do something like that again? Yes, of course. Cool. Uh, great cast, great crew, superb director, wonderful writers, and, and, and one of the great, great film experiences of my life. Yes. That is great to hear. Thank you okay. so much. I'm sorry, we will get there, we will get there. Um, thank you so much, my name is Tyler. So, my friend and I were discussing recently how we feel the whole story of Lord of the Rings is really summed up as a story about friendship and fighting evil to protect what they love. And the moment we feel like encapsulates that is when Gimli tells Legolas that I never thought I'd die fighting side by side with an elf. And Legolas responds with, how about fight, dying side by side with a friend? And so I was just curious what that moment and scene means to you as that character, but also how does that reflect your friendship with Orlando Bloom? 
When we first used to do these conventions, I, I, I would turn up and I would always have a little girl in the audience who would get up and she would say, um, John, um, did you and Ori hang out a lot together? <laughs> I'd have to try and explain that he was 20 and I was 53. <laughs> Maybe we didn't quite have as much together as it was. Orlando was magical to that. He is magical. Uh, it's a wonderful moment. The whole point that you made about Lord of the Rings being about the fight against evil uh, is so important. Uh, Tolkien knew what evil was. Evil was actually German militarism that was going to conquer the world. That's what he had to fight for. And he was wounded, actually, in the second battle, the first battle of the Somme, wasn't he? Um, his point is that peace may come, but at, at, but at some point, your civilization will be challenged. And if you do not rise to meet that challenge, you will lose, you will lose your civilization. Um, there may be some relevance to that in present day, but I'll leave that there. Um, thank you for your question. I love all. Yeah. Yes. Hi. No, 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 stop oh, that. I just spent 75 minutes getting here. I'm going to call them for another four minutes. Yes. Yes. With the announcement of Princess Diaries 3, would you consider reprising your role of Viscount Mabry? Yes, and so would the fabulous Chris Pine. Oh. Yes. So my favorite movie is actually Princess Diaries as well with you in it. What was it like working with Anne Hathaway? Glorious. <laughs> what a lovely company. What fun we had. And of course our director was just magical. He didn't so much direct a film as he invited some friends to come along and have a, have a bit of fun and maybe make a movie while we were doing it. Glorious. Yes. Do you have fond memories of Aladdin and the King of Thieves? <laughs> and lovely Robin. Ah, yes. Uh, not often I cry with the death of friends, because we accept death. But I did when Robin died. He was, he was just different and just a bit special. Yes, lovely memories. Yeah. Is that a dwarf there? <laughs> Hi, my name is Anne, and my question is, could you briefly share a memory about one of the first multiverses, Sliders? Ah, yes. <laughs> well, yes. We haven't really got a time for a lecture on um, uh, temporal time dilation and things like that, but I'm sure that uh, that if your intellect was up to it, I'm sure the Max Toro could probably enlighten you a little bit. Thank you. Max is wonderful. <laughs> yes. Hi. Um, so uh, my question is actually about the first introduction I had to your works, which was through Lamplighter Theater, and I was wondering if you had a favorite production from that. A theater production, you mean? Uh, yeah. The, oh, I, yeah, the Lamplighter I, Theater. You hosted those. Uh, oh, the, the, yes, that, that theater, yes. Yes. They're great fun. Um, no, I can't, I can't at this moment remember a single one of them. But they <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Last question. Just one more. What was your favorite part of Lord of the Rings? Speak oh, <laughs> up. <laughs> What was your favorite part of Lord of the Rings? That wonderful moment when they said, it's a wrap. 